Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer weiteren Folge in unserem Pure and Positive, kraftvoll und erfüllt Leben Podcast. Ich bin Christine Prisilius, Wirtschaftspsychologin, soziale Unternehmerin und Co-Founder von Pure and Positive. Und ich liebe es, mit Menschen im Austausch zu sein, die die Welt inspirieren, die Menschen inspirieren, die einen positiven Beitrag für ein besseres Morgen leisten. Und ein ganz wichtiger Mensch seit es Pure and Positive äh, gibt, ist für uns ähm, der wunderbare Autor John Strulecki. Der war auch äh, schon Cover Story äh, bei einer der Magazinausgaben. Das habe ich euch im Beitrag ähm, auch verlinkt, also schaut da unbedingt mal vorbei. John ist ähm, Bestseller-Autor, inspirierender Speaker und Abenteuerreisender, wie er von sich selbst sagt. Und sein Ziel ist es, Museumstag, Momente für sich und andere zu schaffen und Menschen zu inspirieren, ihren Sinn des Lebens zu finden. Aktuell ist er wieder auf Lesereise und stellt diesmal sein neues Buch in einigen Städten Deutschlands vor. Zeit für Fragen im Café am Rande der Welt. Welt. Und ich durfte ihn ganz persönlich, ganz pure, ganz authentisch in seiner Hotellobby treffen bei seiner Buchvorstellung hier in Hamburg. Und ähm, ja, da haben wir euch jetzt mal mitgenommen, den Beitrag, wie gesagt, bei uns auf dem Portal. Aber wir haben auch einige Fragen ähm, zur Podcast-Folge äh, kreiert, weil es einfach so schön ist, ihm zuzuhören, weil er so viele tolle, inspirierende ähm, Inhalte äh, mit uns teilt. Deswegen, ja, sehr authentisch äh, mit Kaffeegeräuschen, äh, mit Hotelgeräuschen im Hintergrund, aber ich finde, das tut der Sache keinen Abbruch. Ähm, ja, man hat so das Gefühl, man sitzt mit ihm an einem Tisch und hört einfach zu und nickt und fühlt sich bestätigt in vielen Ansichten, die er über das Leben hat, die Erfahrung, die er ähm, mit uns teilt, ist einfach ganz, ganz großartig. Also wir werden über das Buch, wie gesagt, sprechen, ähm, worum es geht, wie er diese 46 Fragen ähm, ausgewählt hat, weil seine Fans durften ihm im Laufe der Zeit persönliche Fragen stellen, worauf er auch sehr, sehr ausführlich antwortet, wie er sie ausgewählt hat, welche Tipps er da auch gibt, wie wir glücklicher werden, wie wir Selbstbewusstsein entwickeln können, aber auch wie wir mit Ängsten umgehen, damit ähm, ja, wie wir es schaffen, uns weniger Sorgen zu machen, wie wir uns von negativen Gedanken befreien können. Aber er äh, wurde auch mal gefragt, ähm, wenn er die Welt jetzt verlassen würde und er könnte nur ein Erlebnis hier lassen, was das dann wäre, ein Gedanke oder eine Idee. Um, und dann sagt er, mach deine eigenen Regeln. Dann spricht er auch mit mir darüber, was es für Regeln sind, welche Impulse er uns dafür gibt. Dann möchte ich aber auch äh, wissen, ja, wie es um ein neues Buch steht, aber da auch schon Gedanken sich zu machen konnte und mit welchen Gefühlen, positiv wie negativ, er in die Zukunft schaut. Also lasst euch inspirieren von diesen wunderbaren Menschen, von dieser äh, authentischen ähm, Kaffeestimmung. Und wir freuen uns wie immer ähm, auf Rückmeldungen von euch, auf ähm, ja, den Austausch dazu. Alles Liebe und viel Freude mit John Strelacki. Dear John, now you are on a reading tour again. Yes. Congratulations Thank you. on your new book. Uh, time for questions. Um, yeah, how are you, and what do you expect and want from the reading trip? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been busy. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. In 2022, we had a little bit of time off. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Uh, but this time, my daughter is in school, yeah. as opposed to the summertime where last time she was able to come with. And so this trip is literally like city to city to city to city. Yeah. And so Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Berlin. Uh, Stuttgart, Erfurt, Frankfurt Airford. for two days yeah. for yeah. the fair. Yeah. And then uh, Berlin, Hamburg, and then we go back to Berlin for two more days of so media. Okay. okay, media. Mm -hmm. uh, but without a doubt, the highlight has been the interactions with the fans. I mean, that's always so heartwarming and humbling. Uh, to have people come up to you and yeah. tell you their stories. It's yeah. just so amazing. Amazing. You know? Yeah. Imagine. And it's actually, so there's been incredibly emotional moments like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also just, it's so amazing to me. Some of these kids are so young. Like, mm. 
Oh, we had a 12 year old and a 14 year old, and the 14 year old yeah. had Das Cafe am Rundewelt and Safari des Lebens and had like little notes all the way through yeah. it. Yeah. And so to see a whole next generation of people finding it, awesome. Like, so inspiring. Mm -hmm. I only wish at 14 or 12 I had any clue what I was doing yeah. in my life. <laughs> yeah. right. And so. what, what do we expect from the trip? Well, I certainly want to introduce people to the concept of the book yeah. since it is different. different. You know, it doesn't read like a story yeah. like the other ones. And as you probably saw in the introduction, my suggestion yeah. is don't read it that way. Mm -hmm. Look at the table of contents and pick something that calls to you. But because the basis of it is, these are all questions fans have submitted over the years many times. You know, so I know that these are things people are struggling with or just curious about. And so my daughter and I had read a book and we read it this way when she was about 10. And it was fun. Every night she would pick a chapter and the next night I would pick a chapter and we'd go through the table of contents. So that was the idea that came to me. Yeah. And, uh, I also think it's too deep, it's too intense to read this one straight through. Mm. At about 40 pages, you're like, I need to take a step back. I need to process, you know? Mm. So, yeah, different type of book. Okay. But my hope is that it... I don't know if it's because my daughter is 17 now, and so 17. like I have all kinds of kids yeah. at my house nonstop, and they're talking <laughs> about boyfriends and girlfriends and yes. job challenges and school challenges. Different and so subjects. I keep thinking, what are the things that I have learned that have been so helpful that I wish I would have known earlier. Earlier. You know, either at that age or you even at 25. You told me last time. Yeah. 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 So that was really the whole focus is how can I help people build a foundation of life mm -hmm. so that then they can go any direction they want to go. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for yeah. doing this. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, you, you told um, a bit about it, um, but what is the book about? What kind of questions are these? Yeah, so they kind of form to fall into four categories, as you probably saw. Yeah. You have the, yeah. the very deep philosophical questions. What is the purpose of life? Uh, what is the cosmic algorithm of the universe? These are like big, yeah. big questions. Then you have the ones that are more tactical to the point that the person is at at this moment you know how do I decide when it's the right time to change a job yeah. or a relationship yeah um, how do I have more happiness in my happiness. life how do I go from always single to yeah. in a relationship yeah, yeah, right yeah. and so those are people that are in a moment of uncertainty or even pain mm -hmm. and saying how do I get out of this yeah. so that's another category of questions I would say that's probably the biggest category if I had to guess then you have the ones that are curiosity questions about things I've dealt with or my own life, like where do you love to travel or how did you become an author, that kind of stuff. And then honestly, there were questions that were just in the unusual category, you know, the one about fruit or yeah, do you yeah, ever yeah, think about yeah. life in weird ways, you know? Yeah, yeah. So those really took me by surprise because I didn't expect to see those types of questions. Mm -hmm. But it was fun because they caused my brain to think of things I haven't thought about before. So mm -hmm. it was good. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, we last saw each other here in Hamburg yeah. in 22. Yeah, during the last tour. Yeah, on your Hope, Help and Heart tour. And what thoughts and feelings did you have when writing this book this time? Because it's a different type of book, it was a different type of writing experience. Yeah. Normally I compile all my thoughts and ideas for three months. Mm -hmm. And like I will be thinking about the story and the story elements, story arcs will be what's coming to me, or even individual scenes. This one it was more, which question do I want to think about and focus on today? Mm -hmm. And so the writing process was, I had this whole list of questions, yeah. and I would go yeah. to the park, I would take my laptop, yeah. and I would, I would do sort of the same thing but a little bit different. I would look at the table of contents equivalent, like the whole list of questions, and I'd be like, which one do I feel like talking about? Or which one do I feel a connection to? And some days it was the ones that were more deeply philosophical. Some days it was like, I, there's a question in there that talks about what do you do when you're feeling down or depressed? Mm -hmm. And that one took me a couple of times of reading it. And then I had to decide how deep I wanted to tell my story. Mm -hmm. So I think that one took me three or four times. And I was like, okay, now's the day, you know, because I don't really hold anything back. I tell it, this is what I've experienced. This yeah. is what it's like, you know, pure, <laughs> authentic, authentic. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to pretend that 
my life is like all perfect. It's not. I'm going through the same thing that everybody else is going through. And so I do remember that you told me about your dad last time and yeah, yeah. how painful the whole process wa was. Absolutely. And yeah. And even that, two years removed from it. It's interesting the things that I've learned about our relationship mm -hmm. from then and the pieces of the relationship that I've found yeah. myself easily forgiving now, two years out, mm -hmm. because I can now see with a bigger lens the beautiful things that were part of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I almost think that sometimes when people pass, we put up walls to mm -hmm. keep ourselves from the pain. Mm -hmm. And it's only with time that we can let those walls down. Yeah. Why exactly 46 questions? <laughs> <laughs> and how did you choose them? I, I initially was going to do 52, one for each 52. Week. Yeah. Okay. And then at 46, the book was already the longest book that I've written okay. in terms yeah. of word counts. Yeah. And I felt that it was where I wanted it to be. So I don't like the idea of adding or deleting to hit a number. Mm. If I have something in mind, that's fine if it makes sense. But in this case, I just felt that the 46 mark, it was where I wanted it to be. So the 52 had been somewhat of an artificial number okay. tied to weeks of the year. Uh, I do think it is going to be, as you talked about, people will read this a question a night, that, or maybe even a question a week. I don't know, because mm -hmm. it's tough to process. Yeah. Okay. And why do you think many of the answers are both entertaining and life-changing? <laughs> well, We've had a chance to interact a little bit, and when you get to know someone a bit more as they are, not just as they write, you see a different side of the personality. Mm -hmm. And so, in my other books, there are certainly lines that a character says, which is funny, hopefully, for the readers. Uh, but this gave me a chance to bring the same sort of goofiness, silliness at times that I am when I'm with my daughter, for yeah, example. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just okay. sort of like, yeah a bit of irre irreverence mm -hmm. and some of it was just perfectly fitting the story about how did you become an author if i don't tell that story with comedy i'll laugh i'll cry like it's you know it's, it's a drama <laughs> that only becomes a comedy if you let yourself laugh and so that was a natural part of the process but i enjoyed that i really did i, I really hope people laugh at times yeah after reading this yeah I laughed about the question, why are some people so stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. Huh? Great. I loved reading your answer. <laughs> so it's, uh, that is really the goal, is to certainly, I, I, ideally, people underline a lot of stuff, circle a lot of stuff, because they're like, I want to remember this, I want to yeah. apply this in my life. But I do hope they laugh out loud a whole yeah. bunch of too. <laughs> Great. Some questions are about how we become... Um, happy, holistic health, mm -hmm. or promoting self-esteem. Yeah. How can we increase good things and conditions in life? One small step at a time. One step at a time. Yeah, it's never lost on me that we have just 24 hours each day. Mm -hmm. One third of that is spent sleeping, although as a mom of three-year-olds, probably <laughs> not even eight hours. Uh, <laughs> and so that's one third gone already. And when the day is done you cannot get it back no yeah. matter how yeah. much you want to you yeah. know yeah. and it's so over. yeah it's, it's done over, yeah. and the older i get the more friends i lose mm -hmm. uh, the more you realize that the timeline is not guaranteed and so i just think it's about small incremental changes in our life how do i find just five minutes a day that i call gold star moments mm -hmm. you know or one hour per week is a nice one mm -hmm. so if you I don't know if you if your guilty pleasure is watching salsa dancing on TV or going salsa dancing, then to allow yourself to put that on the calendar and book everything else around it. Mm -hmm. Don't replace it, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the only really certain way to guarantee that it's in your life. Everything else is a maybe, but yeah. that's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Yeah, there's that line in Das Cafe and Roundabouts where John has this epiphany, right? Mm -hmm. He's talking with Anne and he realizes that. The only way to get to the end with no regrets is to do the things now. Because mm. then no matter when it ends, I will have done, seen, and experienced what I wanted to do, see, and experience. Mm. Right. Yeah, it's with me always. Yeah. And especially as co-parents, you know, if you want to spend time with your kid when they're three, you better do it when they're three, because 12 months later, they're not three yeah, anymore. Three. And you cannot yeah. have it back. Yeah. 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 
And how do you look back to your daughter's um, childhood and to the time you haven't spent with her? I have no regrets at all no. okay. about the way that I parented. Okay. I, I have, was super conscious about making the blocks of time to create the experiences okay. that I went ahead. And even with that, it makes me sad. Okay. There is, as you probably know a bit with your son who's older, uh, but maybe not quite yet, that there is an element of parenting which is a mourning period. Mm -hmm. Things that you love will go away forever. And you know it's going to happen, and then it happens, and you're sort of okay with it. And then like six months later or a year later, it just hits you that you're never going to have that back again. And even if you did it right, the way, and by right I mean the way that you wanted to do it, you still realize you're never going to have it again. Mm. And it's a little bit heart wrenching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, definitely. It's it is mourning. You you're you're saying goodbye. It's never coming back. back. So, never. Grant, and now you don't want to spend too much time in mourning because then you're losing the now. Mm. But I think it's a piece of parenting I'd, I've never heard anybody talk about before, okay. which is a shame. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for being so honest. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. The, the, my daughter now drives. Uh, 17. Yeah. Yeah. And so the last, one of the last bastions of our together time was I would drive her to school in the yeah. morning and then I would pick her up. And so we would talk in the car there and we would talk in the car on the way home. Now she drives with her friends. On her own. Or on her own. Yeah. You know? And so I still see her every day. We still tell each other we love each other, but... The amount of minutes per day that I see her is like nothing compared to what it used to be. Mm. Yeah. And in a year and a half, she'll be off at college. It'll be, yeah. it'll really be nothing. Mm. So, yeah. Other questions are about how do we deal with anxiety um, to worry less? Yeah. How can I get rid of negative thoughts? Or how can I move on when I'm in a depressed mood? Yeah and life has no meaning for me. What answers do you give to that? So the meaning one is a very fascinating one to me because when you look at, uh, when you stand on a beach and look out at the ocean, the vastness of it is overwhelming, you know? And then you think timeline, a hundred years from now, no one will have ever met me that's alive. Probably no one will know who I even was or that I even existed. And then, taking it to the next level the stars come out at night and you look up there and you're like we are such a tiny piece of this whole story yeah. Yeah. my life is meaningless you know and that line of thought though can end in well what's i'm not going to do anything it's all meaningless i'll do nothing but the aha moment for me is that the minute you and i exchange uh a collaborative moments about the joy of parenting we've created meaning yeah you know The minute you smile at someone on the street or coming out of the elevator and they smile back, you've created meaning. And so even though it seems like life is meaningless, we have the opportunity to create meaning. And the minute we do that, it stops being meaningless. And that's a very profound like realization for me. You know? right. No, maybe on the grand scale of the universe, it doesn't seem big, but it's still meaningful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You tell your kids you love them at night, Yes. It's hugely every, meaningful yeah, for them. Yeah, every you know, day. And for you. Yes. So. Yes, well. Yes. So I think that's the trick is don't get, uh, for, for anyone, don't get caught up in the size of the impact of what you do and just allow yourself to be authentic in doing what feels meaningful for you. Mm -hmm. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. But I think you changed the lives of many people through the way you wrote your books and the way you talk to people. Thank I you. Thank you. You did, and you do it every day, and I think you will do it in thank the future. You. And thank you for yeah, doing this and I appreciate being that. the person you are. Thank you very much. You get moments during the tours which are just so incredibly humbling. Uh, I think last time we talked, I may have shared with you some of the, the moments that really holds in my heart, the, mm -hmm. the, the deeply personal ones that people tell you. We had another one in Frankfurt, a young kid, 21 years old, and she was just crying and crying and I sat with her and said you know tell me your story and she was another one of these young kids she was going to take her life she was going to kill herself oh. 
and then she had she she just didn't believe there was anything that mattered in life anymore and my guess is that she has a lot of trauma in the story leading up to this and she felt very alone and that the world was a lonely place and so we're sitting together on the couch and she just said i just want you to know that that cafe story is why i'm here like i was ready to end it all but in that story i found something yeah if that was the only conversation i ever had in my life i would feel like okay i'm good i'm good you know and of course the older you are the real the more you realize like at 18 or 19 you don't even have a sense yet of what is coming yeah. you know yeah. there is so much Gosh. ahead of you yeah yeah and i guess that's what i love is the fact that these stories can help young people realize they're not alone and that there is a lot of fun to be had out there and that there is meaning and to st to stay with it you know it's mm -hmm. going to get better so <laughs> yeah, it was like two days in Frankfurt at the fair were just nonstop amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's the deeply emotional one. Then you have the ones that are every bit as important. It's the young person who says, I just wanted to tell you this changed my life. And, well, what changed? They said, I quit my job, I quit my relationship, and mm -hmm. I changed where I live. And they're just like this bubble of happiness because they've made these changes, you know? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When asked what you would leave the world with, and if you could name just one thought or idea what it would be, you said, make your own rules. Mm -hmm. Which are these? <laughs> <laughs> that question was so funny to write. Yeah, I read it. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to find the one thing, and I was like, I just couldn't do it, you mm -hmm. know? And so mm -hmm. it was very funny that my intuition was like, well, just just write your own rules it was just yeah. funny the way okay, that sort of flowed through okay. me. yeah uh and i think it is a great piece of life wisdom that we grow up with belief systems that are told to us you know when we're little we don't have the filters and we're brought into a world where we see the rules and we think those are the rules But then as you get older, you start to realize, actually, you get to write a lot of the rules. Mm -hmm. You get to decide if you want to work in this industry or this industry. Do you want to study this or this? Do you want to live here or do you want to go travel to Australia? These are all rules that you get to write. Mm -hmm. And the more we realize that, the greater the chance that we actually wake up on a, an everyday basis and with a smile on our face. Because yeah. I think that's it. I think it's the loss of control that is part of what makes us feel super down. At least it is for me. Mm. Those are the days that I'm not in a good place mentally, yeah. Mm. Okay. With your books, workshops and lectures, you help people find out what they really want in life. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell us once again, how did you find out what you <laughs> really want in life? <laughs> I mean, I went in backpacks around the world, so I would say I knew that I wanted to travel from the time that I was a little boy. I wanted to be an adventurer. That experience of backpacking around the world confirmed for me that that was really the essence of who I am. And for some reason, me taking those steps is what opened the potential doorway to the cafe world. And so, yeah, my only advice to someone would be follow the direction that you feel called to go, even if you don't know where it's going to lead you. But there's probably something on the other side of that door, which will become obvious once you've gone through the door but can't be obvious on this side of it. You have to literally walk through it before you can see what's out there. Mm. I think for many people, the reason why they are so unhappy um, is that they think other people can do that, but not mm -hmm. me. I'm not brave enough. I'm not good enough. I see in the newspaper or magazines or on the social media, everybody can do it, but not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I'm not brave enough. And what do you think, how can people take this step to, to believe in, in themselves? Yeah, uh, a couple of suggestions. One is confidence in anything builds confidence in everything. And so there's something that everybody's good at something, mm -hmm. whether it is brushing your teeth, <laughs> tying your shoes, uh, finding your way back home at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Everyone has something that they're already good at. You can either spend your time focusing on all the things you're not good at, or you can start saying, thank you, good job to yourself for the things that you are good at and build from there. So that would be part of it. 
The other part is one of my favorite like aha moments of all time, which is every expert started off knowing nothing about what they became yeah. an expert. How empowering is that? Yeah. I don't know why it took me three and a half decades to figure that yeah. out, but yeah. I used to look yeah. at people and be like, no, but that's them. As if it's something that, yeah, as if they had a superpower or were born with this unbelievable opportunity that is just impossible to attain. But no, when it comes to knowledge, everybody started off knowing nothing. Yeah. So when it comes to this great. world. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that means any of us with enough due diligence, putting in the time, giving it the energy, that we can be smarter at stuff. We can be more skilled at stuff. That's empowering. Yeah, it is. And do you already have thoughts for one more book? What could mm. this be about? <laughs> <laughs> great question. Uh, I really dedicated my time over the last 18 months to two projects. One was this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other one was very 18 much... 18 months? One and a half years? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because there's always a time between when you're done. Mm -hmm. So you do the writing part and then you do the editing. And the editing takes three times as long as the writing. Yeah. And then there's a gap between when it's done and you hand it off to the editors and yeah. when you actually come on tour or yeah. when it's published. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wrote this first. And then in the process of writing it, I realized that it is about this foundation. Like it's about helping people realize if you can build a strong foundation and a lot of it is beliefs, a lot of it is behavioral practices, uh, a lot of it is things that you learn and therefore you don't have the self doubt, for example. So if you can build that foundation, then you can take your life any direction you want to go. Mm -hmm. So that's really been the focus. That book was a big piece of it. And then I created uh, a four week experience for people that they can go through mm -hmm. where through videos, I introduced them to more concepts. And so we just did the last round of that, which was having it translated into German with yeah, voiceover. Sure. Yeah. So okay. yeah, we actually launched tomorrow, uh, a new, new where people can participate for four weeks and I interact with them every single week. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because it's in German now, as opposed to the subtitles, like I'm very excited yeah. to see what'll happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that's been the whole focus, I would say, for the last year and a half is this foundation piece. Uh, what I write next, or what I work on next, I have two ideas that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, I can't go too much into it, but I'll give you sort of the yeah, feel sure. of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, it's a story about love. That'll be the theme of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's viewed for the, from the perspective of a small child. And okay. each time I think about it, I get emotional, so I know there's something there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is I have an idea for a, another cafe-based story okay. from a slightly different perspective. Okay. So, yeah. We look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Interestingly, I don't know if you remember, but one of my big five for life is to write a song that breaks the top ten of the pop charts. Okay. And I've been getting asked about that a lot. And I was actually thinking during this trip that I have about three months of time that is kind of open for me right now. Okay. And I think I may focus on that. Yeah, great. Yeah, because it's writing. Right, yeah. You know, it's, it's writing yeah, lyrics. Yeah. And I think that could be a fun way to spend the next 90 days. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Because I've been, people have always asked, like, when are you going to do it? And I always said, I'll know when it's the time. And so the fact that on this trip, I've been feeling like, actually, it's the time. That's a really good indicator. Okay. Yeah. So it's about intuition and mm -hmm. the feeling and... Yeah. Yeah. So I know what the dream is. And, and now I'm waiting for the intuitive feeling like now is the time. Yeah, it's, and it's, again, I'm no, starting to feel it. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Great. And one um, yeah, last question. What feelings do you have when you look into the future? What is positive and negative for you? Well, the good news about the future is that there are more ways to reach people with positive ideas and thoughts. Uh, again, historically I've been through the written word, but then audiobooks have taken off. And so I love the fact that I have a great partnership with Marcus to do the audio work. Mm -hmm. And so that's awesome there's more ways to connect with people the videos was really my team saying as the world is evolving with video content like if we're going to have a positive impact this is something to think about and so that's another extension of the possibility to make a positive difference the danger is that the quantity of content out there mm -hmm. is like 
staggering. Yes, I definitely agree with you. I mean, I honestly, we have Netflix and yeah, Amazon everywhere. Prime and Disney Plus. <laughs> I, I literally couldn't watch the content that they're creating if I had 10 lifetimes. Mm, and so right. I, I don't know how the next generation is going to not feel constantly overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Yeah. I, like, I'm lucky that I lived way before smartphones. Mm -hmm. So I know what that feels like. And it's easy for me to turn it off. Yeah. But I do worry about the younger generation never not knowing that. Yeah. Your daughter, my thumb. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Because as I wrote about when we talked last time, yeah. you know, boredom is what leads you to get creative and thinking about what would be amazing. Yeah. So if kids don't ever experience boredom, then will they ever strive for amazing? Yeah. I don't know. So we first met each other in 2018 and here in Hamburg. Was so it 18 or 19? 18, 18? Okay. 18. That was at that house, so, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Six years ago. Okay. So your daughter was a lot younger and my son was. <laughs> the twins were not even born. Exactly. So the time has changed a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your wonderful answers. You're very welcome.